Oh, hi, I'm Andre, Director of Product here at Uprise. In this webinar, I'm going to talk about the latest addition to Uprise SDK lineup, and that is the new DocX editor, where you can edit DocX documents natively in the browser, and you can embed it into any modern web application. As part of this, we're going to walk through all the features and functionalities, why did we build it in the first place, and I'm going to show how your developers can get started with embedding it directly into web any web framework of your choice. Now, this is a pre-recorded session, and I'm actually available live with you to answer any of the questions you might have. So go ahead and ask them away. A quick note for existing customers. You probably are familiar with the name PDFtron. However, we just recently rebranded earlier this year to Uprise. Uprise brings together years of innovation when it comes to document processing, multiple companies under one roof. So why did we build the DocX editor in the first place when there's already Google Docs or Microsoft Office Online or other embeddable applications? Well, let me walk you through. So let's start first with Google Docs uh, and Microsoft Office, which in a way are the leaders when it comes to the space. The problem with Google Docs or Microsoft Office is the ability to actually embed it is when it comes to building your own application. So in today's world, a lot of the users still have to go ahead, download DocX document down to their computer, and after that, open it up in Microsoft Office or Google Docs, and now the data is starting to flow through other party servers. There is also really hard to enforce the document control or the retention on that particular document. That document can be hanging out in the downloads folder for a really, really long time. From the development perspective, uh, following Microsoft documentation, um, it could be quite challenging to get it working. And again, it still flows through third party. Now with Google Docs at the moment of recording, there is not really a way to embed a Google Docs editor directly within your application. So hence, we discovered the need for DocX editing um, directly, similar to kind of our flagship product, WebViewer, that uh, you can think of it as Adobe Reader Pro running directly in the browser and allowing you to do anything and everything when it comes to PDF manipulation, annotation, markup, collaboration, digital signatures, and much, much more. Following the same philosophy and the lessons that we learned over the years by building WebViewer, we brought those all to build the next DocX editing experience. It also, at the same time, we've been previously offering DocX preview. However, the way we achieved it is simply by converting DocX to PDF and displaying the resulting PDF. Now, with this new product edition, we're moving away completely from the conversion to the PDF format and allowing you to embed, interact, and edit, or even create new DocX documents directly without having to worry about any intermediate formats. By bringing the years of experience that PDFtron had amongst with other acquisition and companies coming together, we we're able to grab the best of the tech and go ahead and edit the DocX format like we would without converting to any other intermediate formats. Now that brings me to the next point. So there is Google Docs and Microsoft Office. However, they're not really embeddable into your application that you could be building. So then what about other players in the market that actually do allow you to embed other products inside of uh, your software application? Well, the problem with them that there could be relying on third-party software like LibreOffice or OpenOffice, which doesn't always yield the best results when it comes to native DocX editing. And then there's others that actually just fall back on HTML format as editing medium. Now, what happens with HTML is that the users might be trying to achieve a certain look and feel when it comes to their documents. And when they're creating them, browser, it looks all good. But the moment you, they try to get a DocX or a PDF as an output, all of a sudden it looks different. And that's because HTML format is not really translatable one-to-one -one either to PDF or DocX document, resulting on, in the file and documents looking different. So now, kind of grabbing the best of both worlds with the ability to interact, edit, and create brand new docu DocX documents, we then grabbed our tech, put it in a WebAssembly module that runs completely client-side in the browser, and then build a beautiful UI around it that you can actually customize it and tailor it specifically to your workflows. Now, we're just getting started and we have an amazing roadmap ahead filled with some of the most exciting features. 
Of course, we're not claiming to be a direct replacement for Microsoft Office in the browser, uh, since there is million and one feature when it comes to Microsoft Office Word. However, we just wanted to build out with our initial release a, a use case where somebody can go ahead, create a brand new document or edit an existing document and be able to do things like styling, font selection, uh, inserting bullet numbers, uh, list bullets, and many other features I'm gonna walk you through in a demo. What are some benefits you get with DocX Editor that you can embed in the browser? Well, one of the earlier points that I mentioned was the fact that you can provide better document control and retention. It also improves better user experience as well it keeps you users within your application without them having to bounce out to other applications and then try to find the way back um, to your application. And that also avoids another big problem, which is a versioning nightmare, especially when the users have to download the DocX document and then re-upload a new version afterwards um, that creates versioning conflicts. And then you have to kind of track all the different changes that were done on the document, pick up on all those differences. Now, the DocX document is just the beginning and comboed together with the WebViewer component, uh, you can set up a really powerful processes. One of the use case comes to mind is document generation. Um, with the new DocX editor, you're able to create a template of your choice, insert uh, smart tags or squiggly bracket around any of the terms you want to replace, kind of like mail merge. Then you can push it through to another workflow where WebViewer actually swaps out, um, grabs the JSON and swaps out um, the ma mail merge tags uh, with the real data. Then you can get a PDF out of it and you can actually overwrite any signature fields, for example, that needs to be signing to send it down further for a signing process and et cetera. Okay, I think we covered pretty much all the pain points and why we built it. Let's go ahead and jump into a demo and take a look at the DocX editor in action. So I've got the DocX editor I've been talking about loaded in front of me. I have a sales and purchase agreement and we can go ahead and jump in directly into editing. Now, when it comes to this, this is not pre-converting to any intermediate format. We actually are editing the DocX document in front of us. So let's say I have a sales and purchase agreement. Maybe I wanna go ahead and update um, the title of this document. Uh, maybe I wanna go ahead and correct the date as well and edit 2023. And maybe I wanna go ahead add another party to this agreement and let's call them, let's actually make this bold and say triple A uh, tracking. And then I can switch off the bold style uh, by using the shortcuts on my keyboard or I can go ahead and interact with the buttons UI. And I can say a transportation company. And as you can see, whenever I'm adding uh, new parties, it numbers uh, correctly. Um, I can also add a new uh, point right here. And as you can see, it automatically picks uh, the letters uh, as a correct one. And again, uh, we are working with the DocX document. So as you can see that it kind of flows over correctly. Whenever I add any additional points, it kind of pushes the content down um, as we go. Now, let me walk you through some of the kind of some of the features available today. So as you can see, the web viewer UI actually stays consistent. Uh, whether we're kind of viewing the document, uh, we're kind of in more of a review and approval workflow where we're providing comments or annotation, or I can flip it and use it as a DocX uh, editing mode. This is still the same web viewer component, although we just need to enable with a single line of code to provide this kind of functionality. So it still uses the same design language uh, as well as the same customization APIs. So if there are certain themes that you already have built out with WebViewer, you can easily enable any of those themes here. You can also hide and show different buttons and elements that you feel like are not applicable to this. So what am I able to do in terms of functionality today? So one of them is ability. This is gonna come in handy when I'm gonna show you how to create a brand new document. Um, we can set the different text styles, so like normal text, titles, subtitles, headings, um, I can also go ahead and choose different fonts available. Uh, we are making it so you can expand the font list with your own fonts as well and upload it. I can change the font size, apply different styles like bold, uh, italicize, underline, changing colors of the text, as well as justification and alignment option when it comes to aligning, uh, centering, 
um, as well as justifying across, changing the line in paragraph spacing, uh, as well as inserting bulleted list and the numbered list as well. Now, I'm also able to search for any of the content inside of the document. And when I search, for example, search for transfer, it gives me all the results as well as the ambient string. And whenever I click on it, it brings me correctly to the place where it found within the document. So after I make those changes, um, there's certain things that I can do. I can go ahead and print this document or I can save it as. Whenever I save as, several options available. I can go ahead and keep it as a docx format or save it as docx and then later be able to open it and edit it. Or I can actually save it as a PDF uh, option as well and that's available. Okay, so let's say we actually wanna go ahead and create a new document. So, okay, I can provide the name of the document here. So I can say webinar script and uh, provide a title. So let's call it docx webinar script. Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the normal text and then we're gonna type up the agenda for today's webinar in our docx editor. So let me go ahead and create a bulleted list. So I can say, why did we build? Um, we went ahead and covered a demo and functionalities. And the next section is about how to get started with DocX Editor. So the next step, I'm going to show you how your developers can embed this experience uh, inside of your web application. Now, all we've got to do is head on over to uprise.com. And inside of uprise.com, I can go ahead and hit try now. Now we are going to be building a web application. You can select a framework of your choice. So for example, I love React. I'm going to jump into React. Uh, you might need to go ahead, sign up to get the trial key, but all you got to do is still install the same NPM web your module. If you already have it installed, great. You can just go ahead and skip to the next step. Follow this guide to set it up or again, for your particular framework. And after that, all you got to do is scroll to MS Office section and then jump into edit MS Office file. And this is the guide specifically how to enable the docx editing functionality um, within the web viewer itself. So as you notice, it is truly one line of code that makes that interface enabled. So all you got to do is just hit enable office editing and set that variable to true inside of the constructor option uh, for the web viewer. And then initial doc property now can go ahead and accept the docx document or you can still use a load document. Now, how I recommend setting this up is if you already have a web viewer specifically for review and approval or for viewing purposes, um, you can keep that component. I would make a copy of that component, call something like docx, initialize web viewer with that line of code to be in a specific docx mode. And then after that, you can reuse the web viewer component for PDF viewing and annotation collaboration or the new component now that you've just copied and created specifically for docx editing. And then within your UI, you can present your users a choice between saying, hey, uh, you wanna view and uh, provide comments on this, or do you wanna go ahead and edit this file? And then depending on the command that they choose, like view, uh, you can send them to the web viewer component that you already have, or if they select edit, you can send them for office editing to be set as true. Now. Um, when it comes to customization, as I mentioned, you can still use uh, all the existing API. So you can still go ahead and pass all the other contractor and option that are available, for example, for disabling elements and so on. So it's really that easy and makes it more convenient to have the docx editor directly inside of your web application.